Hi, it's Ursula from EasyScraps.com, and today I'm going to take you through the first of what I hope will be several mini lessons on using Photoshop with your own artwork. I do this all the time. I scan in original artwork that I've either drawn or painted or stamped and colored, and then I manipulate it within Photoshop. I pr most often combine it with other pieces that I've scanned in as well and I cr can create all new artwork. So I've had lots of people ask me how I do this and so I decided to create a series of mini lessons to walk you through it. Now I'm the first thing that I'm going to do is take you through scanning the artwork and just so that you know I'm using all my own original artwork if you're going to sell anything, you need to pay attention to copyright laws. And so your best bet is to use your own original artwork. Um, generally, even companies that have an angel policy whereby they let you use their images for selling um, your artwork, they usually want you to use the product um, in its original form. So if it's a stamp, they want you to stamp with it. If it's paper, they want you to actually use the paper. They generally don't let you scan in the images. But if it's your own artwork, you can scan to your heart's content and sell whatever you make with it. And if it's just for a personal project, like a scrapbook page or a card or something that you're going to keep for yourself and you're not going to sell it, then most companies are okay with um, scanning in their uh, artwork just so long as you don't post it anywhere or use it in a project that you're going to sell. So with that all out of the way let's talk about scanning and I have I use an Epson scanner that comes with a piece of software that lets me uh, use my scanner to scan in pieces of paper and so most scanners have a piece of software that you can use to do the same thing and I just wanted to point out a couple of things one is that my scanner software comes with a couple of different modes uh, full auto mode basically does everything for you the best bet when you're working with your scanner if at all possible you want to be in professional mode that lets you determine where your files are going to end up on your computer and most importantly it can um, help you change the resolution that you're going to be scanning things in at so the way that I like mean, there's all kinds of information out there on resolution most books on Photoshop and um, printing will talk about resolution the the easiest way I found to think about it is you want to think about it in terms of your printer or, or, or your ultimate output device. I'm assuming that most of the work that I'm going to be doing is going to be destined for the printer. Um, if you're using your artwork that's and it's going to end up on a website, the resolution will be different. So my printer software I know runs at 300 pixels per inch and so when I scan things in I want to take that into consideration if I was going to use this if I was going to use everything that I scan in only for web work I wouldn't actually need to set my resolution so high but just in case I want to print it I always print I always scan in at least at the resolution of my printer so in my case it's 300 dpi and most good printers where you can print photographs and that sort of thing run at a, in and around that same resolution so we're going I'm going to actually do a preview right now and what that does is it's going to kind of give me a quick peek at what I'm trying to scan in um, on my scanner it's not actually going to do the scanning completely it's just going to give me a um, preview. So here's a drawing that I did and it needs lots of work. <laughs> uh, and, and so I want to scan it in and I'll probably end up manipulating it within Photoshop. 
So my scanner actually, the software, lets me select just a portion of the preview. So I'm going to select just this portion here. And then I have my res resolution set at 300. The reason I've done that is this image is fairly large. And so I don't believe that I'm going to enlarge it any more than it already is. If I decided that I wanted to ultimately print it at double the size of the original, I would actually double the resolution that I was scanning in at. So say I did decide that I wanted to double, double the size of this image, I could scan in at 600. Okay, and then I have the ability to then print that out at double the size it already is. If I scanned it in at 300, doubled the size, and then tried to print at 300, you would see that the printed image wouldn't be as clear and crisp and nice as the original scanned in image. So if I ever want to enlarge my image, I will usually change this resolution to be larger than the resolution that my printer uses, which, as I mentioned, was 300. So because I'm not going to enlarge it, I'm just going to stick with the 300 so it matches my printer, and I'm going to scan. And I have mine set up to go to a single folder. I scan in in a TIFF format. My scanner actually lets me scan into multiple formats. I could scan in at JPEG and TIFFs. Um, TIFFs lose less. They, JPEGs tend to drop some information, whereas TIFFs don't. And so now my scanner opens up my folder and uh, to where it's scanned in that image. And so now I can bring it into Photoshop. So if I double click, because it's a TIFF and the way I have my system set up, it's actually going to bring it into Photoshop. So now I have my scanned in image and it's opened in Photoshop. We'll do this with this in the next set of mini lessons, but for right now, that's the end of this mini lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And please join me next time for uh, we're going to learn a little bit about layers and the history palette in Photoshop. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.